Assalamualaikum, good morning and salam satu Malaysia um, We're going to touch on a few topics today Firstly, Malaysia Airports a leap forward This is our 13th AGM So really, I, I think we're still a young company And we've come a long way uh, We'll talk about our airport revenue transformation and very quickly go through 2011 financial performance. Commercial revenue, what we've done on that side, passenger traffic. We have a slide on some peer comparison with other GLCs, other public listed companies, other airports. And we'll touch on Kelaya too. Of course, Nancy Bashe will also touch about the construction. But Outlook that we have for 2012. Now, so here we're doing a comparison from 2003. Uh, the reason we chose 2003 is because 2003 was when the transformation initiative started in Malaysia. Uh, 2003 also coincided with uh, Tansi Bashe, our MD, and our chairman joining the organization. So, if you look at in terms of passenger numbers, we had gone up by almost two times. But a mark of a good airport is always you are able to perform financially better than the growth you see in passenger numbers. So passenger numbers two times, but our EBITDA we increase almost four times. And before we were reporting economic loss, now we are reporting a much, much higher economic profit at 152 million. And then similarly, you can see the share price uh, has gone up quite significantly from 1 ringgit 69 in 2003 to about 5 ringgit 18 in 2011, which is pretty much what the level is right now. As a matter of fact, I think last year it went up to as high as 7 ringgit. So the company has done extremely well in the short few years. Now, when you look at Kalai, comparing Kalai to other key hubs in the Southeast Asia region, in particular, if you take over the last five years, you will see that Kalai, on an average compounded growth rate over the last five years, we've grown 9%. And Mumbai, Singapore, Hong Kong, Bangkok, they've grown half of what we've grown over the last five years. I think you may recall last year, we ended our presentation by showing that if we continue to work hard, we continue to work very hard with our airlines and grow at this rate, at some point we see ourselves becoming a much bigger hub or even perhaps one day even overtaking some of the much larger hubs right now in like Changi uh, and Bangkok. Uh, so total passenger has gone up from um, over the last 10 years has gone up, uh, has doubled to 64 million passengers overall in 2011. So these are the key milestones. We got incorporated in 91 as a listed company. We got listed in 99. A key event happened in 2009 when we signed the new operating agreement with the government. And in 2000, next year, 2013, we'll have Kelai 2 completion. So what we have been embarking over the last few years is actually uh, what we call a commercial transformation. The traditional model for an airport, you have a very large composition coming from aeronautical revenue. We are right now about 50-50 in the middle. We hope one day two-thirds of our revenue will come from the commercial side and not from the aeronautical side, which is charges to passengers or charges to the airlines. Right now, we're 50-50. And over the last few years, if you look at from 1998 when Kalai was built, we didn't have much area for commercial. What you'll see there is only 3% of space was allocated for commercial. 
And from 2008, when we embarked on our retail optimization program, every year from 2008, 2009, 10, 11, what this slide shows is every single time we add commercial space, there is a marked increase in revenue. So that is what retail optimization program is all about. So we didn't have a lot of commercial space in the past. Uh, as a matter of fact, from this slide, you'll see the, the total commercial space have gone up by almost 50%. Okay? And that's how we've been generating higher profits and higher revenue for the company. So now in 2011, we started off the year quite strongly where we actually got a sovereign rating by Moody's, an international rating agency. You may know already that we are a triple A company in Malaysia. Not many companies are triple A companies in Malaysia and we're one of them. And then in May, we actually got included in the MSCI index. Again, very few Malaysian companies are in that index. Uh, and then there was some issues with regards to the implementation of new passenger service charges in Malaysia. And uh, we had to uh, get support from various stakeholders, not just the airlines, the government and so on. And the debate going back and forth about whether we should increase charges or not, even though it was already spelled out in the operating agreement. So this period saw uh, a bit of volatility in our share price and saw it dipping as a matter of fact to as low as 529 but then when the government finally approved our rates in 27 October uh, the, it went back up but also you will pro I'm sure you realize that uh, there have been a lot of uh, press and news about KLIA2 development a, a doubling of costs and things like that so that affected our share price a bit and it started dipping down from uh, from then on in October because we only announced the our um, our Kalai 2 cost and the details of that cost increase at the end of November so since then the share price has stabilized and then um, uh, we went into 2012 where effectively we had announced in January a private placement exercise and completed that exercise just recently where about 600 million ringgit was raised and this private placement exercise for your information the discount was actually one of the tightest if not the tightest discount to the closing market price ever achieved in asia pacific uh, in 2011 in the last one year or so so 2011, uh, effectively, the industry came up quite well. Um, a lot of uh, airlines doing pretty well in 2011. Globally, we saw uh, passenger demand went up by about 6% as compared to 2010. There was a healthy passenger growth. Load factors actually went up. And optimism in China, despite the gloom in Europe, and then uh, we think 2012 definitely will be a challenging year. Now, having said that, of course, some of the airlines in Malaysia did not do so well in um, in uh, 2011, uh, despite load factors all going up. For MHB, in terms of the financial performance, there's one major impact is with regards to a new accounting standard that came in, IC12. You may recall last year we had a different accounting standard, FRS uh, 139, that had a major impact on our financial performance. So in 2011, we had IC12. Whilst the global passenger demand rose by 6%, we experienced almost 11% growth. And our net profit actually went up by about 26%. And both the LCCT and the main terminal actually experienced uh, growth in passenger numbers. Just some points to take note of in 2011. So as a comparison, between 2010 and 2011, 
Passenger grew by 11%. Revenue grew about the same. Our EBITDA grew about the same. Whereas, but PBT and PAT as high as 20 and 26%. And similarly for our ROE, where we are very um, uh, up in the um, double digits now, about 11.7% at the end of 2011. So as compared to what we announced we will achieve as a headline KPI, we exceeded that. We said we'll do 773 million EBITDA. Instead, we achieved 826 million. We said we will achieve ROE of 10.73. We achieved 11.7. And then service quality, very important to us. We said that KLIA will rank among the top five. In terms of its category, which is 25 to 40 million, we're number four. But overall, when include all small airports as well, we are number 19 in the world. Again, we are giving up very. We are proposing to give up very good dividends. It will be subject to your approval today. If I'm not mistaken, this will be the highest payout we'll ever have with that. And we've kept that 50%, at least 50% policy over the last few years since 2007. And then when you compare KLIA to other airports, you can see most airports have done very well. Okay, Changi is also about the same growth as ours. Uh, Hong Kong is at 5.9%. Uh, the airports that we help manage, Sabia Gochen at 18%, Delhi and Hyderabad, also very strong growth. So a bit more specific into our financial performance. The margins you can see uh, the the um, the revenue that you're seeing there from 2.4 to 2.7 million includes what we call construction costs with regards to IC12. But effectively, our profits were 20% higher because of the higher dividend that we received from one of our uh, associate companies. And then we capitalized interest for Kelai 2. We had a lower share of losses. We have been reporting losses of our uh, investments, associate companies, but we have narrowed those losses because the airports in those two countries, in particular Turkey and Mali and Maldives, uh, have, uh, in, in, in the case of Maldives, they have started showing profits and we had a good share of profits from Maldives. And then overall, there was um, a very conscious cost-saving exercise by the company that has uh, contributed to the higher profitability last year. Breakdown of that revenue growth, almost all of our segments reported a higher revenue. Our retail business, 15% growth. This is our Araman. For your information, uh, the retail industry is probably about 8-9% growth. Airport retail is probably higher, but our retail business, we achieved about 15% growth. And then on the rental side, which is commercial, we get rental from our tenants. That grew about 7%. Aeronautical only grew by 2.3%. And I need to highlight that because what this slide will show is um, uh, our aeronautical was actually about 13% growth. But we had actually paid out about 90 million back to the airlines as incentives. The previous year we paid 30 million, but last year we had accrued about 90 million ringgit of incentives to the airlines. In particular, the biggest beneficiaries are our two local domestic airlines. Our cost analysis, uh, again, we've managed to control our costs. Um, the operating costs only went up by about 6%. We have uh, segmental profits and also with regards to segmental profits, we'll see all our segments have been reporting a higher performance than the previous year. 
we track this as a revenue and cost analysis, what you'll see is we've got a line there that shows non-aeronautical revenue per passenger. This is our attempt to get one passenger to spend one ringgit more. So as compared from 2010 to 2011, we, we managed to get them to spend a bit more but only about 10 cents more. We continue to strive to get them to spend more at the airport. Uh, but just uh, in 2009 or 2008, they were only spending about 11 ringgit. Now they're spending about 14 ringgit per passenger. And then if you look at the cost per passenger movements, that has come down. So our unit cost per passenger has come down uh, almost every year uh, since, um, since our transformation days. Our balance sheet is strong. We have a gearing of only about um, 65, 70 percent. So we show here that we have got a healthy cash balance of 1.5 billion at the end of last year. And then we have that intangible asset, uh, which is where all the uh, costs for Kalai 2 and Penang construction works gets recorded. And then you'll see a line there where a, a, a bar there where our borrowings is about two and a half billion. Now this two and a half billion, 500 million was used to pay, refinance the payment to the government as part of the restructuring and paying off all debts to the government. Uh, two billion of that is allocated for Kalai 2. And uh, as you know, the total cost for Kalai A is up to 3.9 billion. So that's why we had to embark on a bit of a uh, equity raising exercise on the private placement. And we may have to embark on a bit more further bank borrowing to ensure Kalai 2 is completed on time. Uh, this slide just basically shows that the total sales experienced by all, all shops at the airport have grown. The total sales have grown from 1 billion to 1.16 billion. Our Araman business doing very well. And uh, um, uh, in terms of rental and per square meter, uh, this slide, I know it looks small, but effectively it's showing that our rental business, Raman business, commercial business, has been performing very well. Passenger movements. Kalari right now is touching 38 million. Uh, um, our next biggest competitor, Changi, is about 46 million. So I think this year we will hopefully touch 40 million for Kalai and this is contributed by both the main terminal and LCCT although the LCCT has shown a higher percentage growth uh, but in terms of total passenger numbers we still have more passengers going through the main terminal. Other airports also showed a double digit growth which is a very positive sign for us, in particular for Penang, Kota Kinabalu and Kuching. They've been showing very good growth. And overall as well, all our airports. Uh, just a slide on comparing ourselves with some other airport players. We have not been performing that well in 2011 and 2012 in terms of share price performance. It's even lagged behind the KLCI. Uh, but it's been quite stable over the last year or so. Uh, but if you look uh, from 2009, uh, it's, it's because we have grown quite uh, significantly since 2009. So against airport peers, we are doing about 40% EBITDA margin. And these are, so that's average compared to some of the app listed airports out there. Airport de Paris in Paris and most of the Chinese airports there, uh, Japan, Thailand and so on. So our EBITDA margin is uh, quite high on average. In terms of return on equity, again, uh, we're in the double digits now. And then when we benchmark ourselves against other GLCs, 
our EBITDA margin at 40% is, um, you know, it's higher than some of the very established companies there like Maybank, TM, CIMB, Media Prima, you know. So we had this question asked of us from some of the shareholders, so we figured we'll uh, show this slide. So in terms of ROE, we're still lagging. Although we're double digits now, we've always said we want to try and achieve over 10%, as high as 15%. And I think we are on our way there. Now, Kelai 2, in our view, is a major game changer because Kelai 2 will be the largest LCC terminal in the world, dedicated. Uh, but Tanshi Bashir will talk a lot more on Kelai 2 after this. Now, this is what Kelai 2 will do for us. If you look at Kelai at the moment, only 3% of space before we did the retail optimization program was allocated for commercial. After the retail optimization, we managed to get it up to about 5%. LCCT as a percentage is only about 10%, but Kelai 2 will have as high as 15% of space allocated for commercial. So it is a whole new beginning for us. I think we are a much smarter airport operator now. We are much more experienced now. We know what it takes to run a very good airport. And we, that's why we are allocating a lot more commercial space for Kalaya 2, thereby contributing to the slightly higher cost than building Kalaya 2. Kalaya 2 will also have what we call an integrated complex. In the past or now, you may notice that a lot of times when you send someone to the airport, you just drop them off. You don't stop at the airport. We want people to stop at the airport. Okay, not just drop a passenger off. We also have about 40 to 50,000 people working at the airport. There's not enough facilities at the airport that caters for what we call non-passenger market. So, Kalai 2 will have a facility that will also cater for the non-passenger market. So hopefully when you drop off a passenger, you won't just drop off, you'll park your car and you'll visit the shopping mall that we have in front of that terminal in Galai 2. So what, what this tells us is we have 38 million passengers. There will be, uh, so obviously there's a, a big catchment area here, a big market here. Airport workforce about 45 million. You can see the Banda and Stack and all kinds of township that has come up within this area. Tabung Haji will move their terminal from Subang to Kalai. So we hope Kalai will become not just a airport hub, air hub. It can become a taxi hub, ERL, rail hub, or even bus hub. And that will be a catalyst for a lot more land development activities that we see at Kalai A. Just in front of our office, we've also launched about 50 acres for commercial development. We are looking at, uh, and most likely to have uh, a factory outlet, some auto showrooms, FMB center, and some other commercial opportunities in about 50 acres of land. So that's already started. That will complete, I think, after Kalai 2 completes. So again, all kinds of opportunities of Kalai A. At Kalai A, we actually have more land bank than uh, a pro uh, some other property developer in the Klang Valley. So a very sustainable growth for Cal uh, Malaysia airports going forward. So our look for 2012, uh, again, we anticipate it will be challenging. Fuel prices has gone up, but there is some, some. Every once in a while, we hear some good news coming out uh, from the U.S. By the sounds of it, they have uh, turned around. Uh, in Europe, every once in a while, they we we come up, we hear some positive news. Uh, so IATA actually forecasts about 4.6 percent passenger growth in 2012, lower than 2011, but still a growth. For MHB, we are looking at anywhere from 6 to 7%. Although 
uh, Ben Negara and various um, organizations have revised our GDP downwards a bit but we've always been quite conservative in our passenger forecast and we've always exceeded what we forecast as passenger traffic and we think we'll do the same for 2012 and um, there's a point there where you know we, we are continuously engaging with airlines to come to Kalaye. We managed to get four or five airlines every year for the last few years coming to Kalaye. Similarly, we think we'll get at least two or three new airlines coming to Kalaye in 2012. And then um, on the overseas investment side, it's looking good for us. We won Maldives last year. So we've got four investments in our stable right now, two in India, one in Turkey and one in Maldives. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, conclude one or two deals this year. That could be either in the Middle East or in this part of the world. So our headline for 2012, we target an EBITDA of 822 million, which is actually slightly below what we achieved in 2011. Um, ROE, same thing, they're quite conservative forecasts, but I think most organizations that have announced a forecast for 2012 have been uh, very conservative numbers because of uh, the expecting 2012 to be a very challenging year. And then lastly, we still want to maintain a very high service quality at Kalai A and hope to still be in the top five amongst um, uh, within our category. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Faisal.